you kind of got to jump down to what is the film look even because when you shoot on film that has a wide range of looks i've seen film shot on film that looks digital so film look for me really is this psychological uh connection between what you do and the cinema so usually stretching back to what's up guys today talking color correction and how to make your footage look more Hollywood and cinematic. What are they doing that I'm not doing to get that cinematic look? Today we're talking about how to push the film look in post Ten different things that's gonna make your mini two footage cinematic. Being cinematic, travel, vlogs. Creates a dramatic, cinematic, three-dimensional depth to the subject. More motion is gonna give you more cinematic results. Get a much more cinematic image quality like this. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get that real cinematic, light streak look that typically only comes with really expensive anamorphic look. How do I shoot my cinematic sequences? So let's edit this and get the cinematic look. But before we do And I hope that your stuff starts looking a little more Hollywood and cinematic. You've probably heard it dozens, hundreds, even thousands of times before. Man, that shot is so cinematic, or you need to do X, Y, and Z to make that shot look cinematic. By definition, cinematic means relating to motion pictures. That helps, right? So by definition, if a video, a movie is shown in cinema or movie theaters, it is by definition cinematic. But the term is thrown around so loosely and paradoxically, very specifically, that it becomes really hard to judge your own work. Am I shooting cinematically? We all have a vague idea of what it means, but it becomes really hard to concretely define it. Common tropes are that color grade, or shutter speed, or frame rate, or prime lens, or lighting looks cinematic. However, you've probably seen a colorless movie that is very indeed cinematic. Or a movie like The Hobbit, not shot at the cinema standard of 24 frames per second, it was actually shot at 48 still be what would be considered cinematic. Or the golden 180 degree shutter angle rule not being hailed by Oscar winning movies for their cinematography like Saving Private Ryan. Or locked off tripod shots in movies like Grand Budapest Hotel, absent of many fancy stabilized gimbal moves, still be cinematic. Or even exceptionally cinematic footage being shot on an iPhone. The more you delve into the meaning of this abstract word, the more confusing it gets. So let's break down some scenes and discover what makes them cinematic. But first, some history on probably the first thing new filmmakers look to towards making their videos cinematic, and that is shallow depth of field. Before the DSLR revolution, shallow depth of field was something reserved for proper movies. This meant big budgets with cameras touting 35mm film or the equivalent in sensor size on digital cameras. The size of the sensor let cinematographers throw their background way out of focus but still keep their subject tack sharp. However, on lower budget productions, often shot on two thirds inch CCDs or Super 16 film, they really couldn't achieve the same effect. Then in 2008, the Canon 5D Mark II launched. This put sensors as big or bigger than cinema cameras into the hands of the masses. Everyone, and I mean everyone, was getting shallow depth of field. So now young and experienced filmmakers were shooting shallow just for the sake of shooting shallow, trying to imitate their Hollywood idols. Quickly, one of the telltale signs that something was cinematic was broken down into something that was more indicative of a low budget production trying to be something that it's not. Lately, movies have begun to abandon the extremely moody lighting for something that is more naturalistic with Oscar winners like Roger Deakins heavily relying on practical lighting. TV shows traditionally not thought of as very cinematic have ditched the flat high key lighting for a more stylized look. The distinction between what makes images cinematic or not has quickly been broken down. So what is it? I will note there are going to be a few story spoilers ahead. So if you want to skip out on those, I'm gonna put all the movies we'll be talking about here on screen. So if you want to skip out on one, just uh, move to the time shown. So first, let's take Spielberg's 1993 historical drama Schindler's List. As Oscar looks over the terror below, a faint but not so subtle use of color 
in this otherwise black and white film changes the meaning of the scene entirely. The girl in the red coat walks blindly throughout the horrific reality the Jews were facing during the Holocaust, planting a story seed, this unnamed character, for both Oscar Schindler and us the viewer that later enhances the emotional impact of the film. This is one of the most visually striking shots from Sam Mendes' American Beauty. Here the perfect symmetry and striking colors let us the viewer know that this is part of our main character Lester's dream. Additionally, the roses are used as a symbol throughout the entire movie to represent the perfect cookie cutter suburban life that Carolyn, Lester's wife, wishes to live, but it also represents the dream that Lester wishes to live with his lust for Angela. At the end of Inception, Cobb finally returns home to his two kids. He's been dreaming of seeing their faces and hugging them once more throughout the entire movie. But before he does though, he pulls out his totem, a top that lets Cobb know if what he's experiencing is reality or a dream, and he spins it on the dining room table. The camera slowly focuses on the top, still spinning, as Cobb goes to greet his children just before the screen cuts to black. This slow camera move lets us focus in on the aching question of, will the top fall? But the cut to black drives home the main story point. To Cobb, it doesn't matter if this is real or not. He's just happy to be home with his family. In Disney's Mulan, this wide shot over the vast snowscape shows us just how huge and terrifying the Hun army is, massively outnumbering our hero soldiers. It also draws attention to our antagonist, Shan Yu, charging well ahead of the rest of the army, visually letting us and our character know just how much of a threat he is. At the beginning of The Dark Knight, this slow dolly onto the back of the Joker holding a mask in the left hand sets him up as a dark and ominous character. What is shown, and more importantly, what is not shown in this shot sets the tone for the entire movie. Continuing on with the Joker theme, in the 2019 film Joker, this entire opening sequence was shot at an extremely shallow depth of field, almost teetering on the brink of being entirely out of focus. This is in parallel to the emotions of our main character, almost on the verge of completely breaking. In the 1988 film Mississippi Burning, the local clansman sent Anderson and naive Agent Ward a message by setting a cross on fire. As Anderson and Ward watch the fire, we are greeted by a Dutch or tilted camera angle used to give us a feeling of unease, that things aren't right. It's gonna be a whole lot tougher for Ward than he thought. If we take another look at Saving Private Ryan, much of the film was shot at a 45 or 90 degree shutter angle, removing a lot of the motion blur. This achieves a lot of staccato in the actor's movements and extreme detail in the explosions, recreating the jarring and terrifying look of war. Spielberg and Kaminsky could have shot the movie at the cinema standard of 180 degrees, but they chose not to, so it would feel like we were there with Captain Miller and his men. Finally, much of Blade Runner 2049, shot by Roger Deakins, is made with pretty minimal composition, making our characters feel small in a huge damaged world. The extreme neon blues and purples in the city make us feel like we're in a scene from the future which contrasts the bleak, muted grays, whites, oranges, and dark blues of the outside world. What do all of these shots have in common? Their composition choices are rooted in story. The technicals of frame rate, shutter speed, color, camera movement, lighting, do not inherently make the image cinematic, but all of these things working together and meticulously chosen to best tell the story does. Go out and shoot and play around with all the camera settings, all the angles, all the lighting setups, and find out what best tells what best conveys the emotions and tells the story that you are trying to tell. When you consciously make decisions rooted in story, that is what makes your work truly cinematic.
But dude, don't they say that like only half of the cinematic experience is visual? What about audio? Oh, shit.